Today is uh, Wednesday, May 18th, 2022, and I want to take you back to Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11 again today as we look at the temptation of Christ and how it becomes a pattern and an example for us to be victorious when we are faced with temptation. Matthew 4, verses 1 through 11, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you're the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it's written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. (laughs) Jesus said to him, It's written, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you'll fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan! It's written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. This temptation, that is, this first temptation, turning stones to bread, deals with the lust of our flesh. And Jesus' answer was, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So for all of us in our lives, we're going to be tested, tempted to sin, to break our allegiance to God through the lust of our flesh. And Satan comes to Jesus and says, prove you're really the son of God. Turn these stones into bread. Now, listen, if you're so high and mighty and to you nothing is impossible, just go ahead and do it. I know it has some words there, not not trying to violate the scripture, but I think Satan comes to us in so many ways to just egg us on, so to speak. And I think potentially something like this, oh yeah, since you're so hungry, 40 days and 40 nights you've been, you've been fasting, you need to eat. And you need to prove you're the son of God, so prove it by making some food, turn the stones into bread. I can hear Satan now. Why linger for weeks in this desert, wandering around with the wild beasts and craggy rocks, unhonored, unattended, unpitied, ready to starve yourself for one of the necessities of life? Is this befitting of the Son of God? At the bidding of the Son of God, surely these stones shall all be turned into loaves and in a moment present an abundant repast. See, the enemy, he'll just keep pushing on us, applying to the button at that moment that we're already kind of desiring after. And so I think as commentators say, Satan tempted Jesus to despair of his father's goodness and to distrust his father's care concerning him. It's one of the wiles of Satan to take advantage of outward condition. Uh, you don't have what other people have. You're hungry and you need food, so you just well steal that food right there because I don't think any of you are turning stones into bread. And here we find Jesus quoting from Deuteronomy 8. So he, or, he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna which you did not know, did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word which precedes from the mouth of the Lord. That's the scripture Jesus was quoting when Satan tempted him to turn the stones into bread. Hmm. Now I want you to catch this. May the Holy Spirit press this deeply upon your spirit today. Jesus is saying, no matter how hungry I become, I will not do something wrong to fulfill my lust. 
Oh, I want God to put that in my spirit and your spirit today in a powerful way. I want to say it again. Jesus is saying, no matter how hungry I become, I will not do something wrong to fulfill my lust. In other words, my father knows my need. <laughs> he will provide. Oh, I've got to have that kind of trust. We've got to have that kind of trust. Let us not learn to take any wrong courses for our supply. Not go and do something immoral to get what we want, to take care of a desire in our heart. And even when our desires are so pressing upon us, we, we won't do something immoral to fulfill that desire. The Lord will provide. If you need it, the Lord will provide it. Listen, ladies, I'm speaking to you about the loneliness that comes over you and you want a man. Don't give away your soul. Grasp the word of God and cling with your spirit to the living God who is living water to your soul today. Men, I'm talking to you about the same thing. Giving up your desire for purity and holiness to satisfy some craving desire that will be over in a few seconds is not worthy of your attention. Mortify and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Here's, here's the thought. Trust the Father's care of your life when tempted by the lust of your flesh. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you, you allowed your Son to be tempted to prove to us that we could overcome, but more so to prove that the Father cares and you're taking care of us. Don't let this desire turn into an obsession. Oh, God, speak to us. Speak to all of us. You're, you're going to take care of us today. And no temptation is going to overcome us as we trust in you and we use the word of God. Oh, God, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God's grace, God's peace all over you today. Be blessed in Jesus' name.